गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स ऑनरेबल जस्टिस मनमोहन डॉक्टर विवेक देव रॉय माय डियर फ्रेंड शैलेंदर एंटायर टीम ऑफ टैक्स इंडिया ऑनलाइन माय कुलीग्स और स्वाइल कुलीग्स फ्रॉम सीबीआईसी ऑफिसर्स अदर ऑफिसर्स फ्रॉम सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट स्टेट गवर्नमेंट्स रिप्रेजेंटेटिव्स फ्रॉम कॉरपोरेट्स लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन I must say that the topic that Shalinder asked me to speak about is a little intimidating, even to me, after serving 40 years in various capacities in the tax department. Let me start my talk uh, with a little anecdote from 1942. Albert Einstein had given an exam to senior physics students at Oxford. His assistant asked him, isn't it exactly the same exam which you had given last year to the same class? Yes, yes. Well, the answers have changed this time. So what was true in 1942 is far truer today. The rate of change over time has become far steeper than ever before. When we see changes over a shorter span, we are often constrained by boundaries which may be constitutional, political, technological, or economic. But when you think decades ahead, most of these do not remain boundaries or constraints. We know Elon Musk is talking of placing one million people in Mars by 2060. Yuval Noah Harari, I am sure most of, the, most of the people would have heard about him, famous author of Sapiens, which has sold millions of copies and translated in 65 languages. He believes that humans may cease to exist in 100 years, replaced by AI-enabled robots as new species, entirely being capable of multiplying on their own. Whatever be the credibility of such projections, it is widely believed that the next 25 years would see change somewhat equivalent to somewhat equivalent in quantum to what has happened over the last 100 years. So I tried to spend some time on the field of taxes, how they existed immediately after independence. Total All India tax collections, both central and state governments after independence were just about 500 crores. Now we are projected to collect nearly 42 lakh crores during 2022-23, which is 8,000 times of the money that India collected immediately after independence. Even if you adjust this number for inflation, the increase is more than 200 times. Now all this revenue has come with one of the lowest tax rates in the century. Top marginal rate of income tax was close to 98%, I repeat 98% in 1973-74. Average customs tariffs till 1990 were four to five times of present. There were no tax credits in central excise for the first half of the last 75 years. And in sales tax, VAT was introduced only in 2005. GST, as you know, is still trying to find its teeth. Now, if this talk was being held in 1950 or 1975 or even in 1990, I doubt anyone would have made the projections anywhere close to where we stand today. I thus approach this subject with great humility, attempting to touch very briefly on sub key trends. Clearly, a 15 minute presentation can only touch the surface of the subject. Now let me open the innings with the first thing, first trend that I wish to talk about, that is the rising public debt. The aggregate debt of Indian states has reached a 15-year high of close to 32% of the GDP. Some states are hovering at a precarious level of 40% or even 45%. RBI has flagged five states that are at dangerous levels. The debt burden of the center is also rising. 
The recent economic crisis in our neighborhood and some other countries is a stark reminder of the critical importance of keeping public debt within sustainable limits. One has to learn to optimize what I call the trinity of how much to borrow, how much to spend, and how much to tax. GST compensation has not only dried, dried up, but the future, stands, future GST compensation says stands committed to repay the amount borrowed to pay the previous shortfalls. The worst impacted states are already facing a crunch in the range of 30 to 35 percent of the GST's assured revenues. Now, with freebies gaining center stage, this is likely to place significant pressure on center to help states bridge the gaps. Now, recognizing the limits to getting revenue only with improved compliance, I feel governments will face pressure for newer taxes or higher taxes, including allowing very high deficit states to impose GST at relatively higher rates than the national average. Many states, I've already witnessed, many states have already started levying fee and charges for the provision of many services, levying such fee more like taxes. Now, there are questions regarding the constitutional validity of such fee and so on and so forth. So these will keep courts and taxpayers and tax authorities sufficiently engaged in times to come. Next trend that I would like to uh, talk here is the changing demographics. Now, it is estimated that the old age dependency ratio, which is defined as the number of people aged 65 and above as a percentage of number of people in the age group of 20 to 64, will jump by more than 50% in the next 25 years across major countries of the world. India presently enjoys a relatively better demographics, but our number would double in the same period due to the law base. It is well known that consumption tends to peak when people are middle-aged, while it is lower for older people, and as they consume far less durables, which pay higher consumption taxes. Moreover, the incomes of older people suffer far lesser income tax. So this creates pressure to raise tax rates on rest of the population, though it may not be advisable to meet the entire gap from higher taxes. It is usually tough to increase the rates of personal income tax, which has far more serious effects on labor markets and investments. The burden thus falls elsewhere. To take the example of Japan, that has one of the highest populations above 65 years amongst major countries, which is about 30%. Now, they started their VAT sometimes in 1989 with a rate of 3%, which was increased to 5% in 97, 8% in 2014, and 10% in October 2019. Next trend that I would like to talk about is the climate issues. Now, we are aware that world has committed to net zero emissions and India has committed to net zero emissions by 2070 and achieve 50% of that target by 2030. Now with the tapering off of fossil fuels, one of the major sources of taxes from petroleum and coal constituting presently nearly 25% of all state taxes and about 17% of all central taxes will start declining gaining considerable momentum by the end of the next decade. That will create pressure to augment taxes from other sources. Now, even though electricity is a part of the GST, it is presently fully exempt, allowing states alone to levy electricity duty. Its exclusion from GST adds to considerable cascading, denting India's global competitiveness. India needs and should see a GST regime to include at least environmentally friendly electricity in GST, supplementing taxes lost on fossil fuels from alternate sources of energy. Next trend I would like to briefly mention is the impact of security issues. 
international trade is now much more complex with countries increasingly using trade tools to force rival countries to accept their political or economic demands. This is known as trade weaponization. The US-China trade war in the last few years exemplifies this trend, escalating with almost no influence of the World Trade Organization. The United States has publicly treated many companies of China as threat to national security. The primary tools implemented in the trade wars are the customs tariffs and trade restrictions. Free or preferential trade arrangements are entered into with countries as a means to negotiate larger strategic interests with aim to dent the economic and thus the military might in the desired directions. We have seen North Bloc and Udyog Bhavan increasingly being guided by the South Bloc on such issues, a trend that is likely to become far steeper in future. The next trend I wish to talk about is the formalizing of the economy in which taxes are both a contributor as well as a beneficiary. Now we have seen in the past many years that TDS and TCS in income tax have already made significant contribution in this area. In GST, tax credits can now only be claimed if the particulars of the suppliers are validated, making it much tougher not only to evade GST but also to carry out illegal transactions. The rapid adoption of Aadhaar, UPI, Jandhan, and electronic platforms for commerce is forcing a vast informal cash economy into formalization. These electronic commerce operators are being subjected to TCS in GST as it brought massive formalization of such restaurants with accounted sale increasing up to 50 times in certain cases. In many sectors, profit margins are tax evasion. Such businesses are increasingly shutting down. As per Ministry of Corporate Affairs, nearly 4.5 lakh companies shut down during the first three years of GST, an unprecedented number. This is also evident in the corporate tax collections rising by close to 24% and GST by 33% in the first half of the current financial year. Fewer and fewer entities are contributing far bigger share to profits and taxes. In the United States, the top 100 firms accounted for 84% of the combined earnings of all listed companies. This figure was just 49% in 1975 and 53% in 1995. Now this may raise fresh issues including whether we need to collect taxes, particularly like GST in the present form, from crores of taxpayers and whether the compliance, whether the kind of compliance mechanism that is designed to fit, designed for one hat fits all is needed going forward. I would expect to see AEO, which is authorized economic operator kind of system that is prevalent in customs, working in GST over the next few years. The next very important trend is digitalization. Now, if India has to meet its ambition of reaching a 20 to 25 trillion dollar economy by 2047, we would need to be hyper competitive and save on all costs that do not add interesting value to a product or service. Cost of tax compliance is one such cost. Tax compliance in future will be like self-driving cars based on algorithms and design systems freeing up drivers' attention to concentrate on business. Getting forward billions of packages, going forward, billions of packages will be sent out for delivery using drone, robot, or autonomous vehicles. If anyone believes that eBay bills, tax return, searches, and seizures will survive a lifetime, he may not be thinking even a decade ahead. Automated tax systems, 
relying on advanced data analytics, will know so much about economic participants that evading taxes and hiding wealth would become extremely difficult. Blockchain, digital currencies, artificial intelligence, and robotics-based solutions will apply to a large number of existing problems, helping predictive working, including automated filings and verifications. Even though facing a robot judge sounds like science fiction at present, Many envision this as a part of next set of possibilities in administration of justice. These technologies already facilitate justice delivery in many countries like China, Singapore, the United States, and the United Kingdom. Artificial intelligence automatically screens out cases for the purpose of reference, recommends relevant laws and regulations, drafts legal documents, and alters perceived human errors in a judgment. At least the problem of revenue-biased show cause notices in tax laws can be addressed through such AI techniques restricting demands unless the machine validates the proposed notice by a desired minimum rating. A few words on the convergence of taxes. Now, taxes are essentially of three kinds on consumption, on income and wealth, and as tariff barriers. GST, you know, is a consumption tax on goods and services. Now, the distinction between goods and services is fast diminishing. Already, cooked food, construction services, are construction sectors are defined in GST as services, and many intangible supplies are taxed as goods. Going forward, more and more goods will be traded as services. For example, Instead of owning one specific vehicle, one might buy a subscription package that gives him the option to drive different cars as per his liking at different times. There is a case to treat services no differently than goods, including in matters related to customs. The case for subsuming various consumption taxes into GST, various taxes outside GST into GST will continue to beg serious consideration. I also wish to raise a larger issue. Is there a fundamental difference between income tax and GST if income inequalities are taken care through direct benefit transfer? After all, income tax is a tax on profit, while GST is a tax on the same profit plus finance costs plus labor costs. Similarly, is there a fundamental difference between GST and customs GST includes transfers across state borders, while custom is a tax across international borders. GST tariff is already based on customs tariff. I see massive scope for convergence amongst all these taxes, or at least tax laws, including the possibility to have just one tax in future collected equally between center and states. This can start with a common tax code on operational issues. As I am reaching the end of my talk, I wish to raise another important question. Where does all wealth come from? Some may say taxes. However, if you tax Peter to pay Paul, it is a zero-sum game. All wealth comes from science and technology. The wealth in the first industrial revolution came from inventions in thermal dynamics, that created heat engine, the Industrial Revolution, and produced the likes of Rockefeller. The next wave produced electronics, and the new Rockefellers were the likes of General Electric. The third wave brought computer and internet and produced new wealth creators like the Fang companies. What are going to be fourth and fifth industrial waves? Fourth wave has just started and concerns advancements in artificial intelligence, nanotech, and biotech. Heroes of this area are not created yet. The fifth wave, which will start in another 25 years or so, is expected to bring fusion power that will bring machine brain interface and what is called as digital immortality. It is well impossible to project tax scenarios for these technologies. Suffice to say that some of the people who would be dealing with these are present 
in this room. While new technologies would bring lots of value, it would not come without its own share of challenges, some of which might need new taxes. World is already debating robot tax to be levied when you replace a human worker with a robot to incentivize human employment and creating resources for reskilling or as means of livelihood for those replaced. My future sounds like science fiction movie, you are probably wrong. But if it doesn't sound like a science fiction, you are definitely wrong. I hope deliberations to follow will help us to find a clearer path on some of the issues that I have raised. I see tremendous potential in TIOL to continue to create tax awareness of a very high order in times to come and ignite interested minds to serve our nation far better. I wish them success in every possible way. Thank you for listening to me patiently.